On behalf of the Peace Action Main Board, I have the privilege of um, recognizing Stan Scott with our other Peace Worker Award for 2018 uh, for all of the great work he has done for Peace Action Maine over the last 15 years. Um, I wasn't here then. I haven't been here the whole time. <laughs> I'm a new recruit, relatively speaking. But I did a little background research. Um, was that I learned Stan has been an active member of Peace Action Maine since he first moved to Portland back in 2003. Um, in that time, he devoted much energy and effort to serving Pam, um, perhaps most notably uh, for um, the numerous long evenings that he spent the entire Peace Action Maine meeting washing dishes um, <laughs> Uh, back when the meetings were regularly held at Woodford's Hall and we had a potluck beforehand. And, uh, for 300 people. Yes, for 300 people. Now, not having done this myself, nor even witnessed it firsthand, uh, this seems particularly heroic to me, and I <laughs> applaud him and thank him for this effort. Um, in addition to that, um, Stan was critical in bringing Chris Hedges here for the Peace Action Main meeting in 2014. Um, whew, thank you, Stan. Um, and um, he provided a lot of key uh, energy and effort in bringing other relevant and important speakers to Peace Action Main meetings, including um, Nermeen Sheikh, Phyllis Bennis, and Andrew Basevich. And he even hosted some of those um, personally at his house. Um, oh, and Bill McKibben, I forgot him. Um, uh, Stan joined the Peace Action Main Board in 2012, and in 2014, at the annual meeting, he stepped into the chair of, uh, excuse me, he stepped into the role of chair of the board, um, which he was serving in when I met him a couple of years ago. In that time, I witnessed his tireless effort to keep us all on track, which I personally know is quite a burden, and keep us active and keep us relevant and keep us connected. Um, in Maine and to our community and to issues of peace and justice that are important to all of us here. I also want to thank Stan for always having cookies and tea when we had Peace Action Maine board meetings at his house and for welcoming me so warmly as a person who myself had just moved to Portland and was looking to get more involved outside of my day job. So for all of this and more, thank you Stan, I present to you the uh, Peace Action Main Peace Worker Award for 2012, 2018. I'm going back in time. Thank you. Devin has given me a strict limit of three minutes, so unlike Seth, I actually wrote out some notes for this. <laughs> I'm a professor. <laughs> but I, like Seth, I, I feel very extremely honored and humbled by this. I feel like there are probably a lot of other people in Portland that have done more for peace than I have, but I, I, I have been quite dedicated to Peace Action Maine for a number of years, and I, and I, um, I had a kind of a medical crisis last spring, which made me drop my membership on the board. And um, I've missed it. I must say I've missed you all, and I really enjoyed reconnecting with people here tonight. I um, prepared some comments here about the world we live in that I would like to share with you. It's said that we live in a post, in an era of post-truth politics. In 2016, the year that our current president was installed, not by popular vote, but by the structural elitism of the Electoral College, the term post-truth was chosen as the Oxford Dictionary's word of the year, coincidentally, with that election. Lying may be nothing new in public life, but we've had a glut of it in the past couple of years, a time when the counselor to the president can speak, only, can speak openly of alternative facts, and the president's legal advisor can say openly, truth isn't truth. A.D. Barkin of the Center for Popular Democracy wrote in a current issue of The Nation, the cure for 
what ails American democracy is more American democracy. By analogy, I might also like to say the cure for post-truth politics is holding unstintingly to the consciousness of truth and a grassroots activism and politics of honesty, authenticity, integrity, in one word, truth. The Greek dr tragic dramatist Aeschylus wrote in the fifth century BC, in war, truth is the first casualty. As all wise people down through the ages have known, violence and lying work together. This includes the structural violence of racism, sexism, homophobia, xenophobia, and the many insidious features of the war economy in which we live. As avatars of wisdom in modern times, Gandhi and Martin Luther King have insisted by putting their bodies on the line the cure for the lies of violence is soul force or holding on to truth. In the most challenging political environment of my lifetime, I see it as a time that calls for strength of character and soul and holding on to truth in the midst of layers of lies. The worst of the lies underlying many others is that violence, like greed, is good. Martin Luther King understood, quote, when our nights become darker than a thousand midnights, we will know that we are living in the creative turmoil of a genuine civilization struggling to be born. But to those who stand on the warm threshold which leads to the palace of truth and justice, we should not seek to satisfy our thirst for freedom by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred. We should conduct our struggle on the high plane of dignity and discipline and not allow our creative protest to degenerate into physical violence. Again and again, rise to the majestic heights of meeting physical force with soul force. A more and more complete awareness that truth is truth. And in the more blunt words of poet and activist Wendell Berry, be joyful, though you have considered all the facts. <laughs> Thanks so much for offering me this award. I'm very moved by it. <laughs>